So pleased to have at the table Mark R. Smith, because there's a lot of Mark Smith, so we should use your middle name as well from Macroscopic. Thanks so much for coming on. What is this contraption? Sure. All right, so to the average viewer, it's just going to look like a camera, uh, but that's actually not what it is at all. Um, so the best way I can describe it is if you've ever looked through a microscope, and even if you haven't, one of the first things that you do is you adjust the focus, and that's because you need to see what it is that you're looking at. So we've set up uh, a hardware and a software platform that allows you to see very small objects, things like pollen grains, up to things like butterflies. Um, but instead of a, a limited depth of field, we stitch together individual depths of field so that we can bring the image completely into focus. So it's layering. It's la essentially, yes. How long does it take you to layer a photograph so that you can see the intense depth that this will give you? Depends on the size, but typically less than five minutes. Where does this come from? You, you told me when we talked a little bit that this comes from the U.S. Army. Yeah, Tell it me does. about that story. Yeah, so um, my neighbor, Anthony Gutierrez, is a doctor uh, with the, I think it's the U.S. Health Command. They changed their name a couple of times, but it's with the U.S. Army. When I was in high school, he invited me down to his lab. And it's a good thing, because uh, I was like science's kid. But um, I think he really helped me, helped me find it and grow a passion for it. And he introduced me to this technology, which at the, at the same time he was using something called automontage, which is a very expensive technology uh, that would allow you to do the same thing. But because DSLRs these days have such a high resolution sensor, uh, we decided to create the exact same thing using uh, a DSLR camera. So the military had this, they shelved it, and you're now licensing it from the military. That's right. So Macroscopic Solutions licenses this technology, and because I'm a geoscientist myself, it's my um, intention to sort of expose the idea, expose the potential of this product for various scientists and researchers all over the world. Let's take a look at some of the pictures that you sent me just about how fine you can see into an item. Sure. So the first picture, what, what is this, Mark? What are we seeing here? Okay. Um, Beautiful colors to start out with. Yeah, so it looks extremely abstract. I mean, if you were to look at that, you would think it might be an oil painting or something else. But sure enough, that's a plain light photograph. And to get a photograph of something that small, and we're looking at the order of about 10 to 50 microns, you would typically use a scanning electron microscope. Is that part of a butterfly? What is this? Yeah, so yeah, I was going to get to that. So what that is, it's actually a moth. So those are scales from a moth um, that, we, that uh, basically was purchased from Madagascar. And I have a lot of friends who are lepidopterists uh, up at the University of Connecticut, and Stan Malcolm provided me with this moth, and that's actually scales Let's come back and, and see what you're holding up. Is this the actual turquoise part of this butterfly, if we can, if we can right. get a shot of that. So you were able to go way, 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 way into that wing and sure. get that color turquoise. And I said to you, this has an application, that could be art. You could mm -hmm. hang that on a wall sure. by taking that picture. Yes. So this is, this is a butterfly from where? Uh, it's from Madagascar. And, and I was telling you the colors in nature are amazing. All right, let's go to the next picture and, and see what we have here. All right, well, that's a beetle, correct? Yes, it is. Ladybug? Yeah. All right. Tiny, tiny, we know that, but this is huge. How big is this blown up? Yeah, so if we were to enlarge that one image, um, we can hang it from the side of the Empire State Building. So the resolution of this is really unparalleled. So when we have a DSLR, uh, which we use in the Macropod, you can't really learn photography overnight, but what we allow you to do is get the most out of the camera in a simple way. Uh -huh. So we've set it up so that light is perfect. Your camera settings are perfect. So typically, if you were to enlarge an image, you'll notice you'll introduce noise or it'll pixelate. One of the things you'll notice about our images is that if you were to enlarge it to 100%, and you can do this by visiting our website, you'll notice that there's no pixelation and that the image is going to maintain its same level of clarity all the way out from 10% size all the way up to 100%. That's amazing. All right, the next picture. Yeah. Here we have another butterfly, and it, the colors are just magnificent. Now, this takes you about five minutes to layer all these colors so that it comes out like this? Sure. So that's a larger sample. It's a, it's a, sort of this, it's a different sample than this one, but it's the same species, and it's the underside of the wings. Uh, for something large like that, that's one thing that's really interesting is we can image the entire sample in context. But because the resolution is so high, we can zoom in and see very small and fine details relative to the overall sample. But yes, that took less than five minutes to capture that image. And what is this, Mark? Uh, this is bringing it back to reality uh, for a lot of people who don't get to see these samples. So this is the eye on the back of a $1 bill. And if you were to enlarge this image, and you can do that by visiting our website, 
you'll see the individual fibers of the paper itself, which is just basic denim. It's just amazing. And the next one. <laughs> a raspberry, a correct? A raspberry, yeah. Now, I've looked at a raspberry. I've picked raspberries. But when I was looking at this photo, it goes way down into the hairy sides of the raspberry. Yeah, not only that, but you, I mean, you will be able to see the cells in the raspberry seeds if you were to enlarge this photograph. And that is only a 5x image, but because of the resolution in the camera sensor, we can achieve 20x magnification. But we've been innovating and changing the technology where we're now at a level of 100x. Wow. And this is a diamond. Yeah, that is a diamond. And that's amazing what you're able to see. So if somebody gives you a diamond and they bring it, you can see any flaws in it. That's right. So you can see various inclusions, but one thing that's unique about that diamond is it's actually a fancy white. So a lot of people can confuse uh, white diamonds for being actually, they're colorless. They're not white at all. Whereas if you can get fancy colored diamonds that actually introduce some sort of color. And if you look really carefully, you'll see some blues and you'll see that it has that milky color. So one of the things we can do is we can actually characterize catalog diamonds uh, and that's gonna prevent things like theft and just for researchers to actually identify and study these things. We can what, learn quite a bit. The applications for what you're doing are massive. From art to, you were telling about uh, Darwin, you took a picture of something that, that Darwin gave. What, what did you do with that? What yeah. were you telling me about that? So that's quite neat. Um, I told this story actually last night. I, I, I'm a, I've always really liked science. Uh, and being at the Natural History Museums, I always wanted to be behind the scenes. And we were at a conference in Portland, Oregon, and we had a coleopterist from the Natural History Museum in London bring us a beetle. Um, and this beetle was unique because just recently, just this past year, it was described as a brand new species. Not only that, it's a holotype specimen, which means that there's just one of these beetles that exists and is known and has been collected. So what's really unique is that they could bring us that beetle, we could set it on here and image it in under five minutes and get a super high resolution image. But what's really, really interesting is that it's a very delicate sample because it's only one that exists. And at the same time, that sample itself was collected by Charles Darwin in 1832 during his beagle expeditions to Argentina. Have you thought about the ramifications of what you're doing? And as soon as folks know about you, and there, there are others doing some similar techniques, but you are constantly innovating what you're doing with this camera. Can somebody buy this from you and do this themselves? And what's the cost of this camera? Sure, yeah, so that's exactly what we do. Um, we sell and provide and build these technologies uh, we have various other vendors that help us along that are really great and also influential and work towards the same goal. Um, but what we try to do is put this in the hands specifically for one market, and that's science, scientific researchers. That's a market I like because I myself am a geoscientist. Um, and we know that there's quite a bit of potential in terms of what they can do, uh, do with it. So in terms of what it costs, it costs $22,000 for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But what's also really interesting about macroscopic solutions is that it's not just an all-encompassing kit. So it's not what you see here on the table. The whole thing will collapse down into a portable pack. And it also comes with several other lenses, which allow you to do almost really any form of imaging you need to do. Uh, you can do macro imaging. You can image landscapes. Um, There's just no end. There, there really is no, end. no end. No, and the great thing is, too, is that we come with it. So all of our customers, and we actually share our customers. <laughs> you carry it over and you, sh and you show folks how to do this. We spend one-on-one -on -one time with our customers. I want to look at a YouTube video um, that, that I found very interesting, and it's about a hummingbird uh -huh. and just how close. And the, the video ramifications of this instrument are amazing. So as we look at it, and there's hummingbirds. Now, the, you started out with pond scum <laughs> here, which I thought was interesting because look how far down into it you can see. Yes. I'll let you talk about this. Well, sure. This is the Azola fern. It's actually the first fern in the world that's actually going to have its genome sequence and the whole thing was crowd fu crowdfunded. If you look at the top of a pond, it's typically green. That's what you see is that little fern. And you're looking at cells. And the human skull. And now what is this? Is, is this bread? No, so this is a human skull. This is a cross-section oh, okay. through a skull for <laughs> anthropology. Yeah, and that's what it would look like. So it is porous just like that. It contains blood vessels and you can see exactly what that looks like. Just, I mean, I, I see art all over this. I mean, every single picture, and what is that, Mark? So that's, that's a begonia flower, and you're looking at the individual cells and the petals uh, of that flower. And I, it's funny that you say art, because as a scientist, we always try to, to see information. So we're trying to learn something from looking at these images. Mm -hmm. And that's part of a hummingbird. That's right, so that's the crown feathers on the head of the hummingbird. That's just amazing. And a, a salt shaker. Sure. And then we're going to look at the fine grains of salt. Yeah. 
Wow, looks like ice. Yeah, it does, it has similar properties. All right, let's come back here now. You've brought some other things with you. Yeah. Describe what we have on the table, table here. Sure, um, so I'll start with this. Uh, this is sand from the beach in New Zealand. And if you were to go to www.macroscopicsolutions.com and check our gallery and click on the sedimentology album, you'll see a photograph of this. And why I brought it is because the sand grains are so fine, they could actually fill my fingerprints. That's how small they are. And with this technology, what it allows you to do with photography is really reach your potential. So we can enlarge a sand grain, which is about 10 microns in diameter, up through a millimeter. And they do range in size, but these are particularly small, so between 10 and 50 microns. And we can enlarge it to the size of this table. Wow. And what else have you brought? Oh, that's right. So I do have some more things. <laughs> so um, this is an emerald ash borer beetle. And one thing that's pretty neat about this is that in well, about 10 years ago, it was introduced into and it's Michigan. it's tiny, very it's, tiny. It's small. I can actually open it up. Okay. And this is a recent image. If you were to click on the photo stream of our gallery, you'll see a huge panoramic of this sample. And this beetle is distinct, and it's also a hot topic right now amongst entomologists and conservationists because it's destroying America's ash trees. Uh, it came from China, and it's moving west. It started in Michigan, and a lot of communities that are built around ash trees, it lines their streets, they're completely dead now because of this. this I'm just thinking our, our camera angles can only go in so yeah. close. If we had one of these on our cameras, just, just think about the pores they would see in all of our skin. <laughs> oh, we've imaged human, human parts, taste buds on your tongue, parts of the individual iris. Just amazing, and then, and then one more thing. Yeah, so, so this is another thing that's pretty neat. Um, and this is really, I think this is a good example as to why this technology really shines. Uh, so this is a piece of amber, it's fossil amber, and inside of it is a little spider that's been fossilized. Um, so a lot of people think about science and what you can really learn from science. And what's really neat about something like this is as you image it and you start to look at its properties, you can start to relate back. I'm going to just put it in my hand. Yeah, so sure. You, you can relate it's very tiny. today with the type of species of that spider and you can figure out, okay, what the species that was. And at the same time, how old is it? Because you can date the amber. Right. And then you can image it and you can start to catalog and it could very well be the discovery of a brand new species. People do that all the time. So with macroscopic solutions, the sky's the limit. Where are you headed, do you think, or do you even know? I can see people on the phone saying, can you take a picture of this? Can, I mean, you could solve crimes, you can do art. It, this has military ramifications. I can't even imagine what kind of ramifications this technology has. Yeah, I mean, so it is a technology that's been around for a while. But so what Macroscopic Solutions really specializes in is, is letting people use it, but with ease. So we want to put it in the hands of scientists. But I mean, really, we have people calling us from Pratt & Whitney who are imaging uh, mechanical parts, engineering. Um, my optometrist has taken an interest. And various people, I mean, if you ha can hold anything in your hand, it is remarkable what you can learn from it if you were to image it in detail, color, and context, which really rivals other imaging technologies because there's not a lot that can actually encompass all of those things into one package. Well, you think about uh, surgeries, you think about seeing tumors, you think about, you know, just the most microscopic photo, what you can learn. It's amazing. Yeah. Mark, thank you very much for coming on and telling us about this great technology and macroscopic solutions. Sure. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Made a trivial pursuit, spend one this sin. Who is this girl? I spend all night kissing and a bomb is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution. I find a piece of the door, but it's also a metaphor. Things keep dark to the grocery store of a mind. Just the same time. Get right ahead in the last ride The harder we look, the less we can see Don't you know you 